Hello and welcome to the 22nd installment of my Pokemon Generation 3 ROM hacking series. The focus of this tutorial is to learn how the hexadecimal number system works as well as how to apply patches to your ROM. We'll be utilizing some new software throughout this tutorial, those being Lunar IPS by Fusoya and Tsukuyomi UPS by Bu. This video will be broken down in the following segments. What is hexadecimal? How do I expand a ROM? How do I create a patch? And how do I apply a patch to my ROM? There will not be an application demonstration after the bulk of this tutorial. There won't be enough applicable information given by the end of the video, so I'd rather use the extra time to better my explanations. If you know how to count, you should be aware that every number consists of a particular permutation of digits, those being 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. After 9 comes 10, which is the second available digit on top of the first. 11 is the second available digit on top of the second. 12 is the second available digit on top of the third, and so on. After 19 comes 20, which is the third available digit on top of the first. My point here is that as we increase in numbers, we simply move on to the next available digit or add a zero to the end of it. This system of numbers is called decimal. The prefix deci means 10, hence having 10 digits available for us to use. Throughout this series, we've used another number system in addition to decimal, which is called hexadecimal, or just hex. The prefix hex means 6 and deci means 10, adding up to a prefix of 16. Instead of only having 0 through 9, hexadecimal offers 0 through 9 and A through F. This gives us 16 digits to work with, as the prefix hexadeci implies. Counting in hex is very similar to counting in decimal. To give you an example, let's count to 20. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, A, B, C, D, E, F, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 1 A, 1 B, 1 C, 1 D, 1 E, 1 F, 20. We used the same algorithm to count as we used in the decimal system, only this time there were a few more digits to account for. Simple as that. The reason I didn't explain this earlier is because we haven't really done much with hex values other than copying them from different lists to represent Pokemon, items, attacks, etc. I'll be showing off things that relate to hexadecimal in more depth during this tutorial, so I figured this would be a decent video for talking about it. With that out of the way, let's move on to ROM expansion. If you've ever downloaded a ROM hack, you might have noticed that sometimes patches end up in the file extension .ups instead of the regular .ips. This is because some hackers expand the file size of their ROMs due to not having enough space to finish them. In other words, they add so much content that they run out of free offsets to write data to. A regular ROM has a file size of 16 megabytes. An expanded ROM has a file size of 32 megabytes. This gives the hacker twice the amount of space to work with. 32 megabytes is much more than anybody would ever need, ever which lets the hacker work without the worry of running out of space in the back of their mind. If you open Fire Red in a hex editing program such as HXD, you should see a bunch of FFs starting at approximately the offset 0x720000. Everything from there going forward is free space that the hacker can work with, which is quite a lot. If you open Emerald instead, you won't see much free space until approximately the offset 0xE40000. That doesn't leave much room for extra content, which is why most Emerald hackers choose to expand their ROMs. Expanding a ROM is actually a very simple process, contrary to what you might initially think. To do this, open your ROM in XSE. Click the Tools menu item, then click ROM Resizer. Make sure the Fill Byte box shows FF, then click the Expand button. That's it. You can also shrink your ROM, but be aware that this will erase any data you write after the 16 megabyte point. Opening your ROM up in a hex editor proves that it has indeed been filled with 16 additional megabytes of FF values. Revisiting IPS and UPS patches, we're going to talk about how to create them and how to apply them. Let's say you've been working very hard on your own ROM hack and you're finally ready to release a beta for the community to download and play. Placing a ROM or .gba file up for download is illegal in the United States and your link will be taken down immediately as soon as a moderator sees it. Because of this, you'll have to create a patch of your ROM hack and place that up for download instead. 
To do this, open Lunar IPS if your ROM is 16 megabytes, or Tsukuyomi UPS if your ROM is 32 megabytes. Both programs have similar interfaces, so I'll be mentioning both during the explanation. Click the Create IPS Patch button in Lunar IPS, or the Create a New Patch button in Tsukuyomi UPS. From there, if you're using Lunar IPS, you'll need to select a fresh, unmodified version of your ROM, also known as the Base ROM. So, if your hex base is Emerald version, select a fresh, unmodified Emerald ROM. Next, select your modified hack. Your patch will then be created for you, and you'll be prompted to give it a name. If you're using Tsukuyomi UPS, instead of choosing the versions one after the other, you'll be prompted to fill out three boxes. Under the UPS Patch File to Create box, type the desired name for your custom patch. Under the Original File box, browse for the fresh, unmodified version of your ROM. Under the Modified File box, browse for your modified hack. Finally, click the Create Patch button. That's all there is to creating a patch. To apply a patch, click the Apply IPS Patch button if you're using Lunar IPS, or Apply Patch to an Existing File button if you're using Tsukuyomi UPS. From there, if you're using Lunar IPS, simply select the IPS patch you're applying and then select the ROM you're applying it to. If you're using Tsukuyomi UPS, under the UPS patch file to apply box, browse for the UPS patch you're applying. Under the target file to apply patch to box, browse for the ROM you're applying it to. Finally, click the apply patch button. Be aware that you can apply an IPS patch to a 32 megabyte ROM, but you may not apply a UPS patch to a 16 megabyte ROM due to there being more data in the patch than the ROM can handle. As an ending note, there are a lot of patches on Poke Community for various things, such as changing a game's text font, applying physical special split from the fourth generation games, expanding the Pokedex to store every Pokemon in existence, etc. After watching this video, you should be able to properly apply these patches to your own hack. Before you go too crazy, however, make sure you take a look at the patches list of bugs or any additional content it may provide that you don't want in your game. I found that most patches out there either create bugs that I don't want to risk having in my hack, or apply all kinds of additional miscellaneous content that wasn't mentioned in the title of the patch. Please be aware of these things. You can always do the work yourself if you don't like any of the patches for whatever you're trying to do. Also, if you use a patch, remember to credit the creator if you happen to release your hack. That's everything I wanted to cover in this tutorial. Hopefully you all learned something valuable from this, and if you have any questions, please feel free to ask either over at Poke Community or right here in my video's comment section. Thank you so much for being my audience, and I'll be back in the 23rd installment of this series.